Thank you for joining us for NBC6 News. I'm Steve McLaughlin. For the past several weeks, extreme heat has been felt across the country. The relentless high temperatures continuing to impact millions of Americans. Here in Florida, the excessive heat has triggered all types of warnings and advisories for weeks and even the first excessive heat warning in Miami-Dade County history. But how are these record highs impacting our world around us. We have our team here to take a closer look. Meteorologist Chelsea Ambries, you're going to take a look at the heat index and how the humidity and the sea breeze changes our dew point yeah. and how it feels. And our hurricane expert, John Morales, good to see you. Always nice to see you again when you're here. Hello to you both. Hello. <laughs> so I know you're going to focus on water temperatures. We saw your work earlier today on MSNBC, and I know we're talking about off the charts and the big question, how does it affect the hurricane season. Well, uh, it already has affected the hurricane season because we are way ahead of schedule in terms of the number of storms that we've already seen. Sea surface temperatures are hot across the Atlantic. Uh, the, uh, they're averaging about a half a degree Celsius. That's about one degree Fahrenheit above normal for this time of the year. I should point out that about a month ago, they were averaging two degrees Fahrenheit above what's normal for this time of the year. So at least it's not as boiling hot, figuratively speaking, as it was just a couple of days ago. But it's definitely well above normal. We're up to the fifth storm so far this year. Uh, dawn, when it formed out there in the Atlantic, normally we don't see that fifth storm until late August, August 22nd. So, you know, sea surface temperatures are definitely playing a role. Uh, I've already talked previously and written as well about these uh, boiling again figuratively speaking uh, temperatures in the waters nearby South Florida right 90 degree water uh, between Bimini and Andros Island 90 degree water and even hotter across many spots in the Florida Keys and and while I'm showing you kind of these broader numbers uh, you should know there are that there are pockets in the Florida Keys that are measuring between 95 and 98 degrees and this is not just at the surface. Hot water temperatures extend pretty deep down. Uh, we saw Ari Odzer with a report indicating that temperatures were in the mid to upper 80s as far down as 70 feet uh, depth in the Atlantic. Now, despite the hot temperatures on the surface of the ocean, which should lead to more hurricane activity, we've seen a pause. Yeah, Dawn's out there, but Dawn is in the North Atlantic where the waters are very warm too. The main development region of the Atlantic right now is being impacted by strong wind shear, and that has kept storms from forming. After Cindy, which was uh, nearly a month ago, three and a half weeks ago, well, after Cindy, not much has happened, and partly that's because of wind shear, and it's also because of one of the biggest outbreaks of Saharan dust we've had so far this hurricane season. Now the question is, there's a chance that that wind shear is going to relax as we go further along into the latter portion of, uh, uh, of uh, the hurricane season. And as that happens, of course, we'd have more of a chance of seeing these uh, storms happen. So as we head into the latter portion of the hurricane season, we're just hoping that this battle between the hot surface sea surface temperatures, which generally would mean more hurricanes, and the wind shear, those strong upper level winds produced by the El Nino, we hope that that battle is actually won by the El Nino so that we get uh, those uh, winds chopping the head off of tropical storms and hurricanes and hopefully keeping them at bay. So you and I have worked together for seven years and Every summer, the same thing happens. Marathon gets a crazy high temperature record, and you and I have a discussion. Should we report it? Yeah. Is it the right thing to do? We know the thermometer is in a spot that makes it more vulnerable and that it's probably a little high, but the morning low temperatures are accurate. We know this because Key West is getting the same records, and we know this because of the ocean temperatures you just talked about. So, talk and I also want to add, it's not just the afternoon records. It's the morning temperatures, like you said, but it's both breaking the morning and the afternoon temperatures mm -hmm. at the on the same days, which yes. also, again. Well, but plus, I mean, listen, you know, the simplest way of looking at this is how many record warm temperatures are we setting versus record cooler temperature readings? And, and the ratio is, of course, you know, N to none. 
right? I mean, no cool temperature records are being Correct. set. And I don't mean cool as in winter. I mean, for example, lowest daily maximum temperature. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the cooler readings that we're just not seeing. So regardless of, of uh, you know, where Marathon fits mm -hmm. in this uh, whole piece, all of us are living through what is the hottest stretch that South Florida has ever experienced. Absolutely. So back in 2020, mm -hmm. when you know everybody was inside because of COVID, we were on the phone every day, another record, another record. Mm -hmm. So I've got a stat for John, mm -hmm. because you love when I keep track of all these numbers. As it ends up, 53 total records for warm temperature between 2019 and 2022. In the month of July, the first 20 days of July, 44. Yeah, no. So we are going to break the four years of records in one month here in South Florida. If people don't believe that July 2023 is the turning point, you know, the numbers don't lie. And you have to think, I mean, El Nino, we're supposed to have cooler, supposed to have cooler water temperatures, and we've never seen anything like this mm -hmm. before. So it's going to show, you know, everything is warming. Yeah, I think it's uh, it, it definitely very concerning, it, especially, and I know you're going to talk about mm -hmm. this very soon, uh, the fact uh, that uh, what the human body feels like mm -hmm. when we add humidity into this picture. And, and, and that's where we really start to see the impact on us. And we see the government, local government, trying to adjust and trying to provide some kind of protection for workers outdoors and whatnot. I mean, this is a, a, a life-threatening issue. Absolutely. Uh, we have been doing some talking about the coral reefs, which I'm going to start to talk about in a second, but I just wanted you to touch on one thing. 70 feet down, researchers at Nova Southeastern have found a temperature of 87, the magic number for coral reefs, 84. What does that mean? Well, a couple of things. Uh, I spoke to Ari Odzer, who, who, mm -hmm. did, who did the research on this, and he tells me that these researchers have never seen a temperature this warm that deep. Okay, so that's a record, too. Yep. And yeah, I mean, what does it mean? It means that we're already seeing the coral bleaching, yep. that, that all these things, and, and coral bleaching doesn't necessarily kill the coral, but it stresses it out to the point where it could kill it. And we already know how, many, how much coral we've lost around the world. Yeah, and the extreme heat is definitely having an impact on the coral reefs, leaving some officials very worried. Well, the water's not just warm. The water is really hot at, for now, for this time of year. So we're right now in the middle end of July, and we're looking at temperatures higher than we've ever seen before. And this includes late summer, August, September. So we are on target for hitting temperatures that we've never seen before in South Florida waters. Well, it's really concerning because these high temperatures are, are just one more stressor on top of all of the other stressors that our, our reefs here uh, face in Florida. When we talk about the effects of climate change, we're normally talking about the effects on human beings, where we live, on the land. But as it ends up, the effects of climate change start in the ocean, where 90% of global warming is stored. And that's because as the planet gets hotter, the ocean gets hotter. As the ocean gets hotter, all of those other things happen. The rain bombs, the droughts, the more frequent hurricanes, sea level rise, and sunny day flooding, it all starts with the ocean. And under the ocean, we have 25% of the sea life around coral reefs. And that's why coral reefs are considered the rainforest of the sea, the most biodiverse area in the ocean. And look at all of the benefits of coral reefs. Protection, food, and shelter for marine life. Protection for us here in South Florida when a hurricane is approaching from waves and storm surge. Of course, education and research, and of course, tourism and recreation. So, how do we get that beautiful color of the coral? It's this symbiosis, this cooperation between coral and algae. The coral protect the algae. The algae feed the coral through photosynthesis, and that's how we get those vibrant colors. And as long as this is happening, everything is in balance. But here's the problem. The ocean has warmed 1.5 degrees Celsius, 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit since 1901. Scientists estimate the reefs can only take another rise of 1.5 degrees, and that's forecast to happen in the next decade. And that magic number right there, 84, researchers from Nova Southeastern have discovered that temperatures 70 feet down are 87, numbers never before seen. That 87 is more 
than that magic temperature of 84. And if the reefs can't drop back below 84, they will not survive. Ocean warming is incredibly stressful to corals um, because, as you know, they, they bleach. So they have these symbiotic algae that live and that are cultivated within their tissues. And the warming causes them to expel those algae. Uh, and when that happens, because those algae are, are a primary source of their nutrition, that means that they can eventually, essentially starve to death if they're not able to recover from it quickly. By the way, last decade was the ocean's warmest on record, 2022, the hottest on record for the ocean and the highest sea level. So how does climate change affect coral reefs? First of all, it's that warming ocean that leads to coral bleaching. Number two, sea level rise. This leads to sedimentation or smothering of the corals. Number three, stronger and more frequent storms mean reef structure destruction. Then we have rain bombs and overfishing and pollution. This leads to runoff and that leads to the algae blooms. The altered ocean currents due to global ocean temperature changes also change the migration and feeding patterns in and around and that changes how much algae we get. And finally, increased CO2, carbon dioxide, this is stored in the ocean. That leads to increased acidity and that leads to decreased calcification of the exoskeleton of the corals. In other words, with the increased CO2, in addition to all of that, we also have the inability for the corals to continue to form. A lot of bad news and it's only gonna get worse as temperatures continue to rise. Let's now talk about humidity and heat index with Chelsea. Right, so what we're experiencing is an increase in our humidity from a normal thing that happens here in South Florida, the sea breeze. Again, here we are, South Florida, above average water temperatures, current temperature around Key West, and a buoy that we saw last week, 98.1 degrees. So again, we're experiencing the extreme warm water temperatures around South Florida. Now those water temperatures are also impacting how it feels outside. Normal sea breeze, the the pattern we're in right now, you bring in all of that moisture. We also continue to fire up those thunderstorms farther inland. That usually helps cool us down, but it's not. With the sea breeze, we're experiencing even more moisture coming on shore. So instead of the sea breeze helping it feel cooler, it's actually making it feel even hotter. And we experienced that in Fort Lauderdale this past weekend where the dew points rose, so the heat index rose as the breeze increased as well. Steve. All right, Chelsea, thank you. And thank you for watching NBC6 News Now. To stay up to date on your local forecast, advisories, or warnings, you can head to NBC6.com or the NBC6 News app. See you next time.